I tell you what, it don't get no better than that. And that was ready to know by the Lore family. And I have a very special guest on the phone with me, Mr. Paul Belcher. Paul, how are you doing today? Andrew, I am doing so well. Uh, I've had a good day and uh, time to just relax right now and uh, get ready to challenge another day tomorrow. But I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So tell us a little bit about where promoting gospel concerts came into the picture for you. Oh, goodness. Uh, 1972 is when we booked our first concert. Uh, we didn't have the concert until 1973, but we booked it in 72. And that was up in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, we had a group called the Hopper Brothers and Connie. I don't know if, if you know the Hoppers was called Hopper Brothers and Connie before or not, but back in 1972, that's what they were called. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was our very first concert. We had them in a group called the Hymnals out of La Folla, Tennessee. So we had it uh, in, in Detroit. And that's where we got started at, you know, and then it just branched off from there. We went out west, and then we moved to Texas, and we, we, we did Fort Worth. We did uh, Abilene, Texas. We did Oklahoma City, Joplin, Missouri, Wichita, Kansas, uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas, El Dorado, Arkansas. Then we went into Houston, Texas, uh, Monroe, Louisiana, and uh, then we went into Knoxville and then Chattanooga. And uh, we also promoted the Seminole gospel thing for about five years. So we've been busy over the last 48 years, sir. Wow, and you don't plan to slow down, do you? Well, I don't know about slowing down, but uh, we're, being, we're being very cautious this year. Uh, we, have, uh, we had a concert in Rome, Georgia back in June, and we could only sell so many tickets. And, uh, you know, we had to try out the quartet and the Grecians. And it went, went off very well. So we're going to Ashland, Kentucky, October to the 29th, I believe it is. And uh, we're going to be very cautious there, too. we got Triumphant Quartet, Karen Peck, and the group who just played, the Lower Family. And, uh, you know, we're going to be we're gonna lay a little low this year. Now, next spring, it's a different story. We've got all of our cities lined up and got some great concerts uh, ready to go. But this year, we're just, we're, we're playing, we're playing slow on it. We're just waiting to see what all the governors do and, uh, you know, the, the mayors, things like that. You know, I hate to book a date and then them, you know, they could, they could, they could have you, you know, close the auditorium down overnight, you know. So we're just, we're, we're being very cautious this year about it. Yeah, so who would you say inspired you to promote concerts? Huh. Well, you know, mom and dad used to book uh, uh, singers into their local churches in uh, the Michigan area, Detroit area, and uh, I just I just took it from there. I went to a uh, gospel singing one night, and I said, you know, I enjoy this. And then somebody said, well, you ought to do it. And I said, you know, I might just try that. So I called uh, Claude Hopper up, and I booked him, and uh, he came to Michigan for us. Little did he know, you know, he was coming for a 17-year-old kid, and he thought he was coming for an old man. And uh, we've been friends ever since. We've known each other 48 years and had a good relationship. So I would say mom and dad was the number one person, people that uh, got me interested in gospel music. So this next group we're fixing to play is one that you have promoted that I've seen a lot, and it's the Inspirations. Tell us a little bit about how they came into the picture for you. Well, a lot of people like the Inspirations, and uh, they were never booked in the Detroit area. And I talked to Martin Cook, and I said, Martin, you need to come to Detroit one time, and let's see what happens. Well, they agreed to come, and... um, that back then, let's see who was with them. Troy Burns, Archie, um, Eddie Dietz, Mike Holcomb, um, Bill Bear Hunter was with them. And that was in 74 or 5, I believe, was the first time we took them into Michigan. And uh, we, we scheduled one every year with them, I guess, I don't know, 10, 12 years. And then when I got to... Uh, transferred to uh, Texas, um, we didn't do as many in Michigan as we did before. So, but we still used them. We used them a lot. We used them. Uh, they're probably one of them in Gold City, 
the Perry's probably, uh, the McCamey's are four of the groups that we probably booked uh, many, many, many times and uh, took them out west. And the buffet inspirations, they've always been one of my favorites. They're just good people. I enjoy using them. And, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about when you put them on stage what you're getting. Well, we're going to play one of their great hits right now. We're going to play Tour in That City right here on WRHG Rock Hill Gospel Radio. And we'll be back with Paul Belcher right after this great song. I'd like to be here this evening in Warren Robins, Georgia, for this live recording called A Night of Inspiration sung by some of the greatest gospel singers in America today. Let's welcome these young men from Bryson City, North Carolina, the inspiration. And that was Touring That City by the Inspirations from Bryson City, North Carolina. Man, I tell you what, I don't think you can get any better quartet harmony than that. What you say, Paul? Oh, you're absolutely right about that. That was back in the 70s. Uh, that was Marvin Norcross that introduced them from uh, Canaan Records. You know, he started Canaan Records and started that label. That was Marvin Norcross doing that. Wow. That was one of their first hits, one of their biggest hits during that city. That is awesome. So we have lost a gospel great yesterday, and we was talking how big of an encourager Ernie Dawson was. Just tell us a little bit about the impact he had on you. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ernie and I have got, we go back probably eh, 25, 30 years, I believe. Um, I met Ernie and at, at, at a church, and we became friends. Him and Linda are great people. Um, this, I was trying to think who was singing with him when I first met him, and I believe it was uh, 
Gary Winningham was with him, and I can't think who the other fellow was, but uh, they were hot. I mean, they, they could flat out sing. The people liked them, and we booked them and took them to Chattanooga. And uh, we, you know, we didn't take them every year to Chattanooga. We didn't want to wear them out. But uh, he was a favorite in Chattanooga. People loved him. Um, we just had him back in 2018 in Chattanooga. And um, the McCamies was there. The Inspirations was there. Karen Peck was there. And uh, Ernie and Airline was there. And Ernie came up uh, from the back of the auditorium. Uh, we got it real quiet in there. And he kicked off on that song, He's Alive. And it was his very first song, and that place erupted. I mean, and they went wild. Uh, people love Ernie. Uh, as far as an impact, uh, I think we both helped each other out. Uh, you know, I needed somebody like him to work with me, and I, he needed somebody like me to book him. So I think we both had a mutual uh, acquaintance, and uh, we just were good friends. Uh, he was very humble, and... Uh, we worked great together. We didn't uh, argue. We didn't have no uh, uh, falling outs. Uh, but uh, Ernie was a good man, and uh, he's got two boys uh, that I, I, I think the world up, Eric and Landon. And uh, I hope they continue and try to carry on the airline name and uh, take care of their mama because it's going to be tough on her. And uh, but we have lost somebody that was really a blessing to a lot of people. But, you know, he's been sick here uh, for the last few years. And, uh, you know, his kidneys. Uh, but, but Andrew, he ain't sick no more, son. I mean, he is. He, he, he's running on those streets of gold. And uh, we've always appreciated Ernie and his family. They, uh, he's got a Landon in his family, and I've got a Landon in my family. Uh, my grandson's name is Landon, but... Uh, I love the airline. Uh, I think the world of them, and uh, I, I wish their family the best, and I hope they continue and uh, try to keep uh, the memory going of Ernie with their group. Well, we're going to play that great song that you was talking about. Here's He's Alive right here on WRHG, Rock Hill Gospel Radio. We'll be right back with Paul Belcher after this. Once I went walking down a long, lonely road I thought I, I had no one who would share my heavy load Then my mind went soaring back to a place I had never been and I realized that I was standing at the foot of my king. There were three lonely crosses on a hillside that day. And as I looked at my Savior, I cried, Lord, take me. He's not dead
goodness what a singer i tell you and that was my home by our good buddy ernie dawson and airline and i'm back with paul belcher I, the one thing that i was telling paul that really got me about ernie was he was such an encourager he encouraged everybody well he'd go out of his way to help you and yeah you, if, if, if you were to sing it and he knew you he would he would run over to you to, just to talk to you and uh you know, push you along some. You know, that's the kind of, kind of fella he was. Man, I tell you, Southern Gospel has lost one of its best. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be a while before they get over that one. You know, they sure will. But imagine what that heavenly choir sounds like. It just sounds a little bit sweeter today. What I thought about was uh, him talking to his mother the first time. Wow. I tell you, that just gives me cold chills thinking about great things like that. And I mean to tell you, Ernie was a great man, and we will see him again someday. Yes, we will. We will. So I hear you got a great concert coming up in October in Kentucky. Tell us a little bit about that. We've got uh, in Ashland, Kentucky. It's uh, Thursday night, October 29th at the Paramount Arts Center. And that's in Ashland, Kentucky. We have the Triumphant Quartet, Karen Peck and New River, and the Lore family. And uh, the place seats, I don't know, 14, 1500, something like that. And uh, we'll probably sell it out if the government will let us. If not, we'll just have to go with what they got and uh, go from there. You know, they may say you can only sell so many tickets here. So we'll see what happens, but it's going to be a big one. You know, Triumphant, Karen Peck, and the, the Lore family in Ashland, Kentucky. Uh, Thursday night, October 29th. And it's going to be a good one, Andrew. So what inspired you to pick these three groups for this concert? I try to book my talent um, so the groups will complement each other. Um, let me give you an example. You know, the McCamies, the Inspirations, and the Primitive Quartet is a good combination. They each complement each other. Karen Peck, the Laura family and Triumphant Quartet, they're all three of them uh, are very good groups, and they all complement each other. You know, you, you you can you can book a bluegrass group, but they wouldn't go well with uh, the Collinsworth family. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Right. They're totally two, two different groups, and uh, the, the people that love bluegrass music, uh, they won't sit through the Collinsworth family. And the people that love the Collinsworth family, they won't sit through the Bluegrass family, you know, the Bluegrass group. So you, you try to get the groups that are complement each other, and the people will uh, like all, all the groups, you know, in the same way. And that's how we try to book our talent. Wow. So tell us a yeah, little bit about... A lot of... Go ahead. I'm sorry. You just can't mix a lot of groups together because it, it's just a bad combination. Wow. So tell us how we can get tickets and what we need to do to get those? Uh, you know, they go on sale this coming Monday, uh, the 3rd of August, 
and you can go to paulbelcherconcerts.com. If you want to go on there, you can sign up, be on our uh, email list, and we'll send you notices about the singing, and we'll tell you about the ones coming up next spring. Uh, or you can go to the Paramount Art Center dot com and you can order tickets but they'll they go on sale this coming monday that is awesome so paul to close out tell us how we can find out more information about what you're doing and what you're up to go to paul belcher com. that's our web page uh we will update it here real soon with all of our dates for next spring and uh, you can just keep in touch with us by going to paul belcher dot com Well, thank you so much, Paul, for coming on with us. God bless you, and we look forward to having you on again sometime. Thank you, Andrew. You keep up playing that good old Southern gospel music. All right. God bless you, my friend. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.
rise up, Lazarus, rise up from the dust. If in Jesus you believe, you shall be released. Go forth, John and Paul, spread the gospel to them all. Give them courage to believe, and they shall be released. Now Jesus went to Bethany in answer to an urgent plea. Two sisters fell down at his feet and they began to cry and weep. They led him to their brother's grave. Jesus knelt to God and prayed. Rise up, Lazarus, rise up from the dust. If in Jesus you believe, he shall be released. Go forth, John and Paul, spread the gospel to them all. Give them courage to believe, and they shall be released. Now doubters who did not believe spread the word of what they'd seen. Then they began to congregate, first two to four, then four to eight. God watched their faith and multiply, and as they echoed, Jesus cried. Rise up, Lazarus, rise up from the dust. If in Jesus you believe, you shall be released. Go forth, John and Paul, spread the gospel to them all. Give them courage to believe, and they shall be released. Sometimes doubt our worldly word But if in Jesus you do trust You shall rise like Lazarus So if you're feeling down and out Open up your heart and shout Rise up, Lazarus, rise up from the dust If in Jesus you believe You shall be released Go forth, John and Paul Spread the gospel to them all Give them courage to believe And they shall be released Give them courage to believe And they shall be released And that was Rise Up Lazarus by the Bobby Jones family. And speaking of the Bobby Jones family, I have them right here on the phone with me. Betty, how are you doing today? I'm doing just wonderful, wonderfully blessed. That is awesome. So tell us a little bit about the Bobby Jones family and where y'all are from. Well, we, um, we are uh, currently out of Amherst, Ohio. Amherst, Deliria area, and that's up around um, uh, Lake Erie, and we um, actually, we have, my, myself, I've been up, we're originally from Kentucky, um, I uh, moved up here, we did when I was just three years old, so this is home to me, but I still have that southern accent from my, my parents, <laughs> and uh, Bob, he he, he moved up here after he graduated from from uh, high school. Bob, I'll let you introduce yourself there. Hi, Andrew. This is Bobby Jones, the Bobby Jones family. It's really an honor to be able to talk to you and, and uh, talk about Southern gospel music. And uh, we love we love the music. We love uh, country gospel. We love bluegrass. We love a lot of long just gospel music. We love gospel music. So. And it, like I say, it's a blessing, and we enjoy doing. We're so thankful that the Lord would let us travel and spread the gospel music to a lot of people out there in the, in the land that don't maybe not able to be in church. They can listen to the music either on CD or on the radio or or on video. And and we've had a lot of reports of a lot of them been blessed by by listening to our music. Turn you back to Betty. So where did the country gospel and bluegrass tones come into the picture for you? Well, you know, we, um, like I said, we, we were both raised up from, from, and from Kentucky. So that, um, those kind of style of music, um, fit our, 
our personality and our, um, you know, our our likes that we had been, you know, listened to for years with family members and what have you. And so we um, we liked that. And when Bob was, when we were uh, just first married, we actually bought, we had a radio program on, and his brother uh, and nephew, they play bluegrass music. So we, we got... Uh, to liking that, but we also, as Bob said, like different styles of music. Uh, we like Southern gospel, we like uh, country gospel, and bluegrass gospel. And um, so, but our preferences are in country gospel um, and also bluegrass gospel because that's kind of where our roots are. So we just played one of your great bluegrassy type songs, and that was Rise Up Lazarus. Tell us a little bit about where that song came in the picture for you. That song, when we were looking for songs, we we uh, we looked for a variety of um, of artists that had had sung in the past, and that particular song came from uh, Patty Loveless, and uh, Patty Loveless and her. Um, her, um, I believe it was her husband, wrote the song, and uh, we listened to that, and we we kind of liked the the style that she had she had done, and so we decided to put it on our CD, and um, we we have really had a lot of good responses from that song. A lot of people like the song. It's kind of up tempo and and lifts your spirits, and and so. Um, we um, we did release we released that on the Moving On CD that we have, which is on you can find it on us on YouTube or um, any of those. You can get you can listen to all of our music actually on YouTube, um, and uh, it's it, it was just a a, a great uh, a great album with a lot of a um, lot of good uh, selections on there. We had. We had um, Mark uh, Birchfield, and also um, we had Wanda Vick Birchfield, who was the musicians on there. And um, Jason, uh, Jason um, he he was the the picker on that one, and and it was a really a really a good project. So we've had Harvest Wind, we've had um, um, the um, Rise Up Lazarus, we had um, also Mercy and Grace. Mercy and Grace was, was our first promoted off of that, and it um, it actually it went to number seven on the bluegrass charts on the singing news. Nice. And so we, uh, we uh, really um, have uh, had a lot of blessings from that uh, particular CD, and our latest one, and you will talk a little bit about that later on, but our latest one uh, was the Lost Locket, and that's that's some songs on there that I have written. So introduce our listeners to this great song, Harvest Wind. Harvest Wind is uh, actually it, Marty Raybon wrote the song, and um, uh, again we we liked the song, but it 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 tells about. A, an old-time preacher man who just keeps sowing seeds, regardless of whether it, whether the uh, what the season is, he's still sowing seeds, and uh, that's what it's all about. Is that we, you know, we sow seeds um, every day that we that we live, whether it's um, whether it's in church or whether it's in, when we're singing in a gospel group. Or whether it's just everyday life, when we meet someone who is down and out, uh, we're still sowing seeds. And a great example of that is just today, I went to Sam's to get some items, and um, we we came in contact with an old, um, a poor old veteran who was actually he was begging for uh, some money to get him some gas to get back home on, and you know. We just, you can sow seeds, and I told him that you could have a have a blessed day, and we appreciate his service, and his face just lit up, and 
those are the kind of seeds that we're talking about um, that you're sowing every day and that, you know, uh, no matter what, you just keep sowing seeds. You know, some of them will, some of them will sprout roots. Some of them will wither away. But, you know, you just keep hoping that you can sow good seeds in your ministry. Well, we're going to play Harvest Wind, and we'll be right back with the Bobby Jones family right after this. This is WRHG Rock Kill Gospel Radio, Rock Kill's number one gospel radio station. Stay tuned to the best in gospel music right here on WRHG Radio. Turns his collar up to a cold October breeze Though the fields are wide to harvest He keeps on planting seed Hoping for some fertile soil Not for rocky plain But he knows within his heart That his labor's not in He's been faithful 60 years with his hand upon the plow. Sometimes he gets weary, but he wouldn't turn back now. The greatest crop he's ever seen is being ushered in. The seed he planted was the word, the fruit, the souls of men. He can feel the harvest wind The master's coming back again But he won't find if I don't buy Cause every day is harvest time And that was a great song called Harvest Wind by the Bobby Jones family right here on WRHG Radio. We want to thank the listeners for tuning in tonight. And we have Bobby Jones family on the phone with us. So tell us a little bit about this brand new project called The Lost Locket. The Lost Locket is um, actually, it's, it's a, it's, the title of it is a song that I wrote. Uh, and it was in... in um, Response to when I was a child, my uh, for Christmas my my mom gave me you know we didn't get we didn't get all these uh, electronics and, and all that stuff. If you got a little bracelet and a and a stocking with a little bit of uh, uh, fruit and stuff in it, I mean that was really a treat to you. But anyhow, she gave me a, this locket and it had the symbols of faith, hope, and and love. 
And so that's what this whole song is based on, is that um, that, that I, I lost this blocket. And for years I had it. And it was, I mean, as far as being worth a lot of money, it wasn't, but the sentimental value. And, and I found the locket. You know, when I was cleaning out some some old jewelry and what have you, and so it sparked my my interest to write this song, um, the lost locket. Well, let's play that song for the listeners right now. Here's the lost locket by the Bobby Jones family. Stay tuned to the best in gospel music. You're listening to WRHG Rock Kill Gospel Radio. We'll be right back after this great song. Mom hid underneath the tree Christmas time was special Little gifts meant much to me As a child I did not realize Now I understand it all It's faith, hope, and love more than symbols of the call Mom opened up her Bible to John 3.16 Teaching me his love Worth more than anything A mustard seed faith Clearly in the word of God child he has for God. Just a little faith will move a mountain in your way. Like little David at just a stone's throw away. My hope now is in the blood he shed on the cross. Where faith, hope, and love A cross, a crown, and anchor Display the gifts from above Now that I am older I see the meaning of it all On faith, hope, and love and his word I will stand tall Just a little faith Will move a mountain in your way Like little David At just a stone's throw away My hope now is in the blood And that was the Lost Locket right here on WRHG Gospel Radio. 
and the other song tried to jump ahead of me. And I'm back with the Bobby Jones family. So we were talking about this new project. Tell us a little bit about what's on it. We have uh, on the, the, the Lost Locket, we have some bluegrass and we have some country gospel um, music on there. And uh, some of them were written by myself. Uh, one of the special ones was was um, the um, uh, John three sixteen in a box, and that that song was uh, uh, written by myself and also from a missionary that's in Australia right now. His name is John Edwards, and it was written out of an idea that I got from a um, a preacher. Uh, Calvin Evans, who used to have a ministry in the Appalachian Mountains, and what he did during the Christmas time was he sent shoeboxes um, to uh, families, uh, poor families, and visited them. So that's where the idea of the song came. And then we have our our friend um, uh, Brandon Kearns wrote some of the songs on on there, but it's just a real good blend of. Um, of a variety of of our uh, styles. So introduce us to John 316 in the box. Um, so it, it, it talks about how this preacher uh, comes up to the house with carrying the box and taking the taking it to the families and about the little girl who who uh, comes to the door and he talks to her. And then a, uh, as a result of this um, box uh, that he brought, she ends up finds the Lord. And it talks about a, a little Bible that's in, in with it. But even deeper than that, we have, um, we have um, partnered with a local church that does uh, the operation uh, Operation Christmas Child that is by the Franklin um, uh, Graham uh, Ministries and so there's been um, people that have gotten saved through that ministry as well and one that we really recall and that uh, was talked about was a, a, a fellow that um, was very bitter because it was over, I believe, like, I want to say, like, uh, Uganda or somewhere uh, in that, that neck of the woods, but he came over and gave his testimony, and all of his, all of his family was annihilated except for him, so he was, he was real angry with all of these um, missionaries that were going over there, and through this shoebox ministry, he found the Lord. And so we, we look at it as being part of us that is our ministry. Well, let's play this great song for the listeners right now. Here's John 316 in the box, and we'll be right back with the Bobby Jones family. country a little girl wakes up in rags no hope for her future nobody cares for her every day's existence is sad a drunkard for a father hasn't heard from her mother in a while Despite her situation, she still has the faith of a little child. And no time. 
time preacher Tries to make a difference Heals up an old shoebox with love Little acts of kindness With a few things she might need To show her the Father above A paperback Bible With a white cross printed on the front When she opened up that old shoebox What she found inside was love Love she had never known A love she was never shown A love that gave the greatest gift ever given A love so great God's only son Gave his life for everyone So that we could spend Preacher said God loves you more than you will ever even know. I'm gonna pray for you if there's anything I can do. Here's my number, let me know. He turned and walked back down the drive but didn't see the tears in her eyes. As she opened up that old shoebox, what she found inside was love. That Christmas Sunday morn, a new life was reborn as her tears fell onto the mourner's pain. I tell you what, you just can't get no better than that. And that was John 316 in a box. And we're back with the Bobby Jones family. We really enjoyed that great song. So tell us a little bit to close out the interview about how we can book y'all or how we can buy this new project. Well, our mu- our music is uh, available. It is um, on CD Baby. We have music on iTunes, Spotify, um, and on um, YouTube. Um, you can also contact us by, um, by getting in contact with our website, which is www.thebobbyjonesfamilyministries.com. That'll take you to our website. And you can uh, also get in contact with us 
by um, uh, sending a message to our Gmail, which is B is in Betty, S is in Sue, J O N E S Jones, two seven nine at Gmail dot com, um, and uh, you can also give us a jingle at our cell phone number is four four zero. Two two five eight zero zero five because we will be changing. Uh, we're we're going cordless now, so we're we're going to be cutting the cord for a a home line. Um, so that's our cell phone number again. It's four four zero two two five eight zero zero five. Well, thank y'all so much for coming on the program. God bless y'all, and we look forward to having y'all again sometime. Yes, and Andrew, thank you for having us on here. Thank you for thinking about us, and um, we want to thank, Chuck, thank you know Chuck and and all of our people that we we have come in contact. You you guys are you guys are awesome to promote our music. Well, thank you so much. Y'all have a blessed night. You too. Bye bye. Thanks, Andrew. Bye bye.